I can assure this House that we will not bring back the withdrawal agreement bill. Um, as the Prime Minister has said, and as Lady Thatcher memorably said, advisers advise and ministers decide, and therefore everything that is decided is the responsibility of ministers. And that is as it should be. I am glad that this is creating such hilarity on the furthest reaches of the socialist uh, benches. Uh, the Right Honourable Lady asked specifically about when the bill would appear. The bill will be introduced and published tomorrow. It is an extremely short, simple and limited in scope to have an election on the 12th of December to ensure that this House can come to a decision, uh, something it has failed to do on Brexit. It has reached a point of stalemate. It has voted to have an election, but not by a sufficient majority to ensure that the consequences of the Fixed Term Parliament Act are met. And therefore, this seems the best way to ensure that the business the country wants us to get done can be done. My hunch is, my fear is, that many people in the country will be slightly perturbed by the course of events which my right honourable friend has set out before us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you, um, Mr Speaker. My honourable friend's point, I don't think, really is the right one to be making on this occasion. <laughs> that the withdrawal agreement bill did indeed achieve a second reading and then lost its programme motion. The honourable, my honourable friend will be aware that without a programme motion or an allocation of time motion coming forward subsequently, the bill remains simply in limbo. But the reason for not bringing forward an allocation of time motion is that the House has made its mind clear that it does not want to deal or engage seriously with the withdrawal agreement bill, and that leaves the only sensible option remaining is to go back to the British people and see what they have to say, to trust the people, to trust democracy, and in so doing ensure that we can stop this stalemate. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I have to be honest with the Leader of the House that when last week Parliament rejected the programme motion but not the withdrawal agreement at second reading, it wasn't an invitation to get quicker with programme motions. Can he explain how he can publish a programme motion for a bill tomorrow that he says is going to go through all stages in the House in one day, but not the details of the bill so that we can properly scrutinise it? Does he not understand that the biggest challenge that this House is giving to this Government is that we want to see the detail before we do the deal? Uh, Mr Speaker, this bill will be so short that it will be very easy to scrutinise in the limited time available, but the Benn Act and the Cooper Bowles Act were both passed in very short time and they were longer acts. I think this is a decision that has been come to reluctantly because the House will not come to a conclusion. And this House has to come to a conclusion. We have been arguing for three and a half years about this subject, trying to deliver on Brexit, on what the British people voted for, and this Government is determined to ensure that happens, but others in a general election will put forward their case. The Honourable Gentleman can try his luck at put for putting forward his case, and we'll be able to see how well he does. Uh, I, I very much regret to say that my right honourable friend is being less convincing as he goes on. As he has said, this House passed the second reading of the Withdrawal Agreement Bill, which was an enormous achievement by the Government. Uh, surely the fact that the House rejected the programme motion on offer means that the sensible course of action that, frankly, our voters on all sides would expect us to do is to have a different programme motion and actually put into effect the bill that the House has already passed. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, my right honourable friend is, I think, rarely and uncharacteristically naive about this, that the House did not wish to pass the bill. It, re it rejected the programme motion, and then the Leader of the Opposition would not take up my right honourable friend on his offer for much longer sittings, 24 hours a day, providing the equivalent, I think, uh, in our terms, of 24 days of sitting to consider the bill. This was all rejected. And so I fear those who now object to the course the Government is taking um, are in a position where they are not following through the consequences of what happened when the programme motion failed. What representations to Cabinet has he made about the House's desire to have another programme motion? Yeah. And what discussions has he had? And if I can ask him quite bluntly, why is he now blocking Brexit? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mr Speaker, that was a great witticism at the end. Um, I think we're all splitting our sides on this side. But the point is that from this very dispatch box, standing here, 
the colossus in front of the House of Commons, the Prime Minister himself, said that he would make as much time available as the Leader of the Opposition wanted, 24 hours a day. And did the Honourable Gentleman beg, beseech his Leader to accept this offer? Did he knock on the door of the Shadow Cabinet and said, please, sir, we want some more? Or did the Labour Party just spurn this offer, ignore it, say that it could complain and stop Brexit because it is a Remain party, in spite of many of its members, including the Honourable Gentleman, who nobly voted for the second reading, representing Leave seats?